Um, photo you're seeing now, while I voice over this, is a, um, a tiger actually chunking on a bone. So he's um, he's just having a bit of breakfast there. He um, he was about ten feet away, and uh, with the, uh, 600 millimeters, I could sort of focus through the fence and uh, get a shot like that. So, which works out quite nicely. Hi right, guys, um, this is the biggest lens box I've ever ever owned. Um, I don't know if you can read, does it sound like so? It does. It's the 150 to 600 uh, Sigma sports lens. It's absolutely massive. Um, I'm not going to do an unboxing because it's already out of the box. Um, but I just thought to show you how big the box is. It can literally hide me, which is pretty impressive. Um, this is the little puppy right here. Um, I have no idea what the camera's focusing on because I can't see anything. But, um, Anyway, um, shooting again with the A6300. Hopefully it's still on my face. Um, it's a big boy, that's for sure. Um, it's pretty heavy. This comes either in a, a Canon mount, Nikon mount, I believe a Sigma mount, obviously, um, for the uh, Sigma bodies. For some reason they don't do them for the Sony A mount anymore, that not that I know of anyway. Um, I'm hoping they do bring that back, it's obviously for the A99 users and things. Uh, but I'm now using the MC11 adapter which goes to E-mount so straight onto the Sony A7R2 it's just a I think it's fully updatable so you plug it into docking well, sorry, the, either dock in there or you can actually plug it onto the docking station um, if you've got the right mount Stay back on. Um, it allows basically it does full it works fully, all the uh, focus points and everything work properly, it tracks, it, um, it I'm not going to lie, it does hunt occasionally, uh, but it's an adapted lens at the end of the day, so I don't think it's going to be 100%. Um, I have been to one place in the last couple of days, um, it's just called the Big, the Big Cat Sanctuary, um, which is in Smarden, which is, which is uh, near Headcorn in Kent in the UK. Um, it's a fabulous place. They open it, I believe, don't quote me this, four days a year. It's a private, I say zoo, but it's just big cats. Um, everything from a white lion pride to a white tiger, snow leopard, um, fishing cats, uh, different lions, other tigers, leopards, panthers, pumas, jaguars, um, things like that. So absolutely fantastic. I've been there for the last two days. Uh, first day I took my dad, second day, um, one of my best mates where we all went today, absolutely fabulous. The weather has been, we've been pretty lucky actually. Um, as we headed home, it absolutely chucked it down, thunder and lightning, so did quite well there. Anyway, the shots of some of the big cats, which I've taken today and yesterday, I will put during this video so you can see. The lens itself comes with, I'm just gonna do a quick, quick user review on this, um, then you can see. Um, let's get those cards a sec. I've had other big lenses from Sigma before. I had the 50 to 500, which was on the A mount at the time. Absolutely brilliant lens, very usable because 50mm to 500 gives you 10 times magnification. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you could use it at air shows, things like that, or zoos. So you've got the magnification when you want to zoom through a fence or whatever, but then you've got 50mm to actually you could do uh, in a normal sort of everyday shots with it. Um, it's about the same size as this, physically. Slightly, uh, slightly smaller intake on the uh, on the aperture there. Um, this one, I put it on its end. You don't get a plastic uh, lens cover on it. You get this little cow, which is quite good, I suppose, because you never actually touch physically touch the um, the end of the lens, which is uh, which I find it actually quite a good idea. You then. With the, there's a contemporary version of this, which is much lighter, um, slightly smaller, um, it's a bit more plasticky, um, and it's not weather fit, but, uh, not it's not weather sealed. This one, the Sport series, is weather sealed. Also, it's a bit more chunky. This thing, this lens hood here, alloy. So a complete and utter monster. Um, it swaps around and it does up by that little screw there. Um, I mean, that is, you know, if you hit someone by accident with it, you'd, you'd know about it, or even that bit there. Um, 
So yeah, it is it is big, and that's at 150, 150 millimeters at the moment. Um, let's unlock it. So that's at full extension, obviously plus a camera, which is about anywhere from that to that, depending on which which camera body you're using. Absolute beast. The nice thing about it is, which I tend to do rather than rotate the the grip there, is you can zoom and back out just by that, and it's very smooth, very lovely. You've got your focusing distances and things on there. The, um, thing. It is a mechanical um, focus ring, so it does actually show you live on there, unlike some of the fly-by-wire um, focus system now, nowadays, or rings. You've got a few dials on here, which is quite good. You've got the lock there, which means you can lock it, actually you can lock it out. So you can go full extension and lock it. It should say that, you can. Well, there you go. Oh, it had locked. Okay. And as soon as you go click like that, it will actually unlock. So you can lock it out or in, so or anywhere in between, which is quite good. You've got the focus modes, so auto, um, manual, and there's one right in the middle, which I believe is sort of. You can have it in auto, but if you want to just manual focus it, you can just basically twist it and it will stay. And it'll go to manual focus. You've got your focusing distances, so you've got full range, so. From as minimum its minimum to its maximum, you can bring it down to 2.6 meters um, to 10 meters, so it won't focus anywhere. It will focus anywhere in between those two, um, and 10 meters to infinity. You've then got your um, optical stabilization uh, off one and two. Number one is usual usual uh, stabilization. Number two is for panning. So if you're on a racetrack or something, you're following the race cars cruising past, and you will get that blurry effect. You can stabilize the image through. Um, then you've got custom buttons, so you've got one uh, off, custom one, and custom two. And what you do is, which I've got, I've got one of the docking uh, pods or, the, or docking stations. Um, you take the converter off, you connect it to the lens, plug it into your PC or your Mac, load up the Sigma software, and you can basically customize this lens. So you can adjust the uh, focusing. So if you've got a lens that is, you think this isn't quite sharp, this is a bit weird. Quite lucky this one is. Um, and if you focus on this, yeah, it's, it's saying it's in focus, but you're looking at it thinking it's not, it's not. You can actually physically adjust this lens, so just to tweak it so you can get everything in focus properly, and then hopefully the lens will work you know, fully. This one seems to be absolutely bang on, so uh, there's obviously a few out there that you know aren't. Um, you can also adjust the focus speeds. So on my customs, I've put custom one and custom two, and off. Off is just left it as standard. Custom one, I've actually left it as faster, more sports sort of orientated. And custom two, I've left it as smooth and a bit more slow, so it's actually a bit more accurate. Um, today I was actually shooting owls, so fly, uh, owls in flight and, and uh, birds of prey, which they seem to do actually remarkably well. Um, it, you know, on the Sony A7R2, which is obviously not a sports camera, it's, it's a high resolution detail monster, you know, it, it, it's brilliant for things like that, but actually it worked rather well, I was quite pleased with it. Um, I could have taken the A6300 and stuck it on here, and it may have worked even better, um, just for the, the rapid rapid shot sort of thing, um, because obviously the A6300 does quite a few more frames a second at, at full, full pelt. Um, what else have we got on here? You have a nice big uh, lens collar, which has got three mounts on it for tripods. So depending on where your tripod mount and everything is, you can have it on there. It's completely adjustable, so you can actually undo it and spin it around the other way. A lot of photographers I know, they unlock it and actually have the handle up here while it's on the camera, just so they can get a hand underneath. But because it's so big, I actually I have my hand here most of the time anyway, or actually on that bit, so it doesn't really get in the way. The the build quality, I mean, it's £1,429 I think at the moment. I bought it on a Black Friday, so I paid, uh, what was it, I think about eleven or £1,200, just, maybe just under the £1,200 mark, so I've got the one4 times converter with it, this, um, I then bought a uh, the MC11 converter 
it uh, mounts a converter for E mount to Canon. Um, that was on the Black Friday as well, but from a different place. So I got the hundred. I think I paid for this. These are a couple hundred quid. I think about sixty pounds less. So you know, not a bad bargain in all. Um, it's an absolute monster. It is big. It's heavy. I'm quite stocky, but today holding the camera out like that, you, you I hand hold it. I don't bother with um, tripods and, and things like that. Um, you know, a bit of exercise in there. But here and there, you, you know it because you're holding the camera out. Um, you know it after an hour or so walking around with it. Um, this is why this is quite good. You've got a, a good strap, nice big beefy strap. And also, you don't want to be using your camera body strap with this thing hanging off it. Um, I think it's around about three, three and, a, three and a bit kilos. So I just wear that that one, and it balances perfectly between the camera and the. Uh, the, uh, the lens, so that works very well. But that's a quick insight to the the camera, uh, sorry, the lens. Um, and the reason I bought it was I had the fifth, the Sigma 50 to 500 OS, which was fabulous, fabulous lens. I had it on the A99, works brilliantly. Got to the A7R2 with the LAE4 adapter, I think it was on that one. It worked. Um, and you were just a little bit limited, it was a bit slow, it hunted a lot. Um, and it just, with the 42 point something megapixels of the quality of the lens wasn't up to that that resolution point. It was, it, it went from being quite a sharp lens, at f8, um, to being a bit of a soft, softy sort of thing really. This thing is f6.3 at 600mm and it's sharp, very sharp. Um, it focuses quickly, um, and it's just it just works. Um, it, like I say, it does. I'm not going to lie. It does hunt occasionally, um, and just think about it. But I'm, they keep updating this. There is a new update for the MC11 adapter, which obviously talks talks to the camera and talks to the lens and you know and sends the information through. And I know they're improving it all the time. So hopefully that may have may have um, just had a few more tweaks. Will obviously fix. Hopefully fix it. Um, it doesn't hunt that much. I mean. I was shooting through um, fence links like this, so you've got square square metal, you know, like a zoo zoo fence with uh, big cats the other side, and occasionally it would just lock back onto the fence and then try and go back through, and then it would, uh, it would do that a couple of times. Um, but having it right on spot focus, you only got to move very slightly and it will come back to there. Um, but, you know, other than that, it, it works. It's very quiet. It's quite quite quick. Um, 150 mil. I do miss the 50 to 500 bit. I do miss the 50 millimeter. It does. It's just for days out. It, it just works. Um, but 600 mil. I've got an extra 100 mil the other end now. So to get headshots of lions and tigers, you know, from 20, 30 feet away um, or more, it it makes the makes the shots. You know, and they're sharp as well. So um, it, you know, it's really really good. Um, so that's that lens. That's the reason I was I was using that today. So that's the reason I've I've sort of highlighted that. Um, I say it's about fourteen hundred, just over fourteen hundred pounds. I believe you can get it without the one point four times converter. Um, it's probably around about two hundred pound less. Going, I guess I'm guessing on that. Um, but I'm, you know, just have a, have a look if you just want the lens. You're not interested in the um, the one point four converter. There's one thing it doesn't do with the one point four converter. That. I don't know if it's just there might be an update coming or, or what. Mine just doesn't focus. It doesn't autofocus um, with the one point four converter on. With the Sony A seven R two, you've got a very good peaking system. You've got uh, focus magnifier, so you can zoom in on the image anyway, and then just focus manually very quickly. Um, I use the Samyang one three five f two a lot for portraiture, and manual focusing that is is a breeze. Very quick, uh, one to two seconds max to get a very sharp image. That is obviously quite heavy, and um, to keep get it manually focused can be a little bit bit, a bit trickier. Um, but uh, you know it works. The other thing I used today was the pivot heads, which I've talked about briefly before. Pivot head sunglasses. The lenses do pop out, and you have I've got clear ones and yellow ones, um, and the uh, sunglassy UV protected ones. Quick oversight on these, they've got an HD, full HD 
um, camera right between the eyes. Um, you've got controls up here, start recording, stop recording, burst, you can do time lapses um, and they're, they're really usable. Uh, your on off button and your charging and data off. Um, they, they're actually really good. They've changed. Well, I bought them a couple of years ago and never really used them. Now I'm doing this YouTube channel, trying to get the videos out a bit more. Actually, quite usable. So you put them on, wherever I look, this rec you know, records and gives me gives the person who's seeing the video my eye view. Today, after speaking to, um, having a random conversation with um, the Hawking Centre, um, they have the birds of prey. So the owls, um, I believe they've got peregrine falcons and other, you know, had a barn owl there today, they had um, another, the kestrels and, and things like that. Um, apparently it's got quite a few birds and they do these displays. And they were at the, um, the big cat sanctuary for four days I believe. Um, it started on Thursday, finishes tomorrow, which is Sunday. Um, so please have a look, if you're from the UK or you're travelling to the UK, um, go on the, I'll put a link on the on the video anyway, but if you go to have a look at the big cat, the big cat sanctuary .org, um, that's their website. Um, and you've also got the Hawking Centre, so that's uh, the hawkingcentre.co.uk, which is their website. Um, you can see what they do. The Big Cat Sanctuary, they do photography days, they do uh, like feeding keeper days, um, and other many things as well. It's a fabulous place. I mean, I, like I said, I took my dad yesterday, took my mate Simon today, um, just to have a look around really, just to try and get some you know nice, beautiful shots of the animals. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so click on the next, um, next video when you see it, part two, and uh, you'll be able to see the the cat sanctuary itself as we have a little walk around um, you can see the surroundings and the um, the cats in their in their areas um, there's a white lion pride and a snow snow um, tiger snow leopard there's a few cats we couldn't see unfortunately because it was quite hot and uh, some love the sun some don't they seem to like to hide away in the shade um, but uh, yeah anyway so I look for part two and she'll be following shortly so anyway, I hope that was uh, helpful to some people and uh, see you shortly